And we are alive, I think. I will check on Twitch. Yes, we are live. Good evening, everybody. Welcome. I'm Yannick, the French guy from Switzerland. I'm back on the Ubuntu on Air channels um, after a small hiatus because we all deserve a break. Um, uh, so, yeah. Um, we are back. Um, no kernel stories tonight. Um, we'll be back to that <clears throat> uh, maybe in two weeks. I have to check with um, uh, with Andrea if that's okay with him to come back and uh, do some more kernel stuff. But tonight we are going to have a look at a tool that you can use to test the... Uh, Ubuntu IS. Ah, so actually, you can use this tool to do a lot more than just testing the uh, Ubuntu and derivatives um, ISOs. You can use this tool to run all kinds of VM. Of course, this tool is something you may have heard uh, of. Uh, it's called Quick MU. It has been written by Martin Wimpress. Um, and it is a wrapper around QMU, which is a, a virtual machine uh, manager uh, that uh, can run all kinds of, uh, of stuff. Um, QuickMU can actually run Windows and macOS and DOS and FreeBSD. And uh, work will be done at some point to try and run ARM um, architecture. But on tonight's uh, stream, we are going to focus on uh, using that to test the uh, Ubuntu derivatives and, uh, and uh, Ubuntu proper uh, ISOs. So let's um, jump into the screen here. I need to clean this thing here. Let's pretend there was nothing on this screen when I got here. And um, so, how do we use? quick uh, MU and how we get it. Well, that's a good point. Let's bring this over here. That's the GitHub page for uh, the quick MU project. I'll go back up at the top. Uh, you will find all you need to know and maybe more about this project. This readme is very long. There's a lot of things you can see here. Um, all the operating systems we can we can have with uh, quick MU, but we're going to do the simple things. Let's like see, we can run Windows 8, 10, 11. I've heard you can run Windows 7 also. You can run Mac OS, you can run all kinds of stuff. So to get that, you can either fetch a release um, on GitHub, you just clone the project. It's a it's a bash bash script. Uh, actually, a couple of bash scripts. So you can just clone the project and then use the binaries directly. Or there's a PPA uh, where um, there there's instructions everywhere. There you go. Uh, you can uh, well that's that's mine. That's not the correct. This is the the GUI. We're going to talk about the GUI later on, but let's let's see. There, there it is. That's the um, that's the PPA you need to add, and then you update and install, and you get QuickMU, and you also get for free the latest version of uh, QMU, which might be um, a newer version than what you would get in the um, official archive. Okay, so let's say you install that or you cloned the repository, and now you have QuickMU on the command line, which QuickMU, and we've got that in user local bin. I'm using the um, Git version, but it also works very well with uh, the um, archive version, the PPA version. So how do we use QuickMU, let's say we want to test some uh, daily ISOs, those that uh, those ISOs that will become 2204 in a few weeks. Well, let's run quick get. Quick get is a, and let's forget about the, the end of this 
command line. We're going to come back to that. Quick get is a companion script to quick MU. Quick get is the script that will go and fetch the ISO for you. So you don't have to know where it is, which one you need to get. It will do that for you. So you should just type quick get. It will say, well, error, you must specify an operating system because it doesn't know what you want. And here you can see uh, all the operating systems that are available. OK, so let's say we want to test uh, Lubuntu. Right. Uh, once again, forget about uh, Fish trying to help me. Uh, but the correct command line is quick get Lubuntu. Now it says, error, you must specify a release. Because we've, you know, we can't, we can't have, we have, I don't know, a, a lot of uh, distribution uh, of, of um, versions available. So list CSV, if you use list CSV, that's for use with, with tools, automation tools, or the, the, the GUI we will, uh, will see later on. But if you use this command, it will spit every single configuration we have. Uh, there's the name, there's the nice uh, the, um, release, the version, uh, all kinds of information here. And so if we pipe that, wc-l, we can see we have 918 different versions of OSs you can grab, download, and install, and run. 918. That's crazy. So if we want to get Lubuntu, we're going to uh, type that command again, and it asks for a release. So let's say we want to test the daily live. So we do quick get Lubuntu daily live. And now just like that, it's going to go and fetch the image uh, using Zsync in this case. But we're not going to do that here because it's going to take a while. I'm using My connection is 4G and it's going to take all the, the bandwidth. So fortunately, I did that already. So let me move that from the, the cache, cp-a.cache, Lubuntu star. Oh, OK. And it will copy. There we go. So that's what you get once an image has been downloaded. And actually, I have over here a terminal where I've done the, just that. That's what I did before the stream. And so you've got that. And then at the end of the download, it will uh, just the checksum. And if everything matches, then it's OK. It's going to create for you a configuration file. And it's going to tell you what to do if you want to run this virtual machine. So that's the command we need to run. All right, let's bring that back over here. Let's clear this terminal and run this command. OK, quick mu dash dash vm and the name of the config file. Actually, before we do that, let's have a look at the config file. That's the most minimalistic config file uh, you can use um, with, with quick mu. So it tells you that the guest OS is Linux. That will help the script to set some optimizations, some drivers uh, to, to, to use with the, the, um, the virtual machine. Um, other guest OSs, you can have Windows and Mac OS, and the optimization won't be the same for those uh, OSs. Then the disk image, that's where QuickMU will create a disk for us to use it's a virtual disk so it's going to grow up to a certain limit i think yeah it might it might not have a a hard limit i think so it could potentially uh, invade your uh, your disk space so just have a look at that there are options in um quick mu that you can find on github that will pre-allocate the disk uh if you want if you want that then the third option is the ISO. It's the file we just downloaded. And it's going to use that the first time when it realizes the, the disk, the QCO2 disk doesn't exist. It will boot 
from the ISO. If the disk.qq2 exists, then it will boot from the uh, virtual hard disk. Hello, Challenger98. Welcome to the chat on Twitch. Is there a performance comparison for Windows 11 machine on QMVS VirtualBox? I don't know. I I think I've never run a Windows 11 in VirtualBox. Uh, from memory, VirtualBox is not that fast. On well, with QuickEMU, it also depends on your machine, on your host machine. Uh, it's not bare metal performance that's for sure but martin did a great job at optimizing everything for windows 11. so you know it's uh just one command line away so give it a try um you you actually get a registered version of windows when you do that uh so you could uh, you can you can just try it and if you don't like it you just remove you know RM the thing, and that's it. And it, it's as easy to get Windows as it is to get a uh, Linux. So you would go with a quick get Windows, and then it will ask for release. So we get Windows 11, and then there we go. It downloads it. So I'm not going to do that. I'm going to remove that. Okay, so we've seen the, the, the config file. So now we can run quick mu dash dash vm lubuntu daily live dot conf right and that's going to start something that you don't see because it started on another screen so let's let me bring that come on window move there we go and there we have it that's um the boot screen uh for lubuntu so we're going to put in lubuntu and it's going to install that. So a few remarks. Um, this is using, uh, if we have a look there, uh, display, right? It uses SDL virtuos. So that means it's the the fastest display, but you don't get uh, well. well Oh, I did something weird. Oh, there we go. Uh, you get that. So you get the auto scaling. Uh, if you've seen, I just press the uh, full screen button and it put the, everything in full screen and it auto scaled. So on um, distros that support that, you're going to have the, the, the full scale. You, but you don't have things like USB pass through, for example, in this thing. Hello, Monica. Welcome to the stream. So using that, you've got the performance uh, version. I would say if you want to test an, an ISO, you know, maybe you don't want to plug a USB stick in there and, and, and do stuff unless you want to import your own file. But I think the the trade-off between performance and ease of use, uh, it, it's it's better to to use this simple version. You can we, we can use Spice. Uh, to have things like copy paste between the host and the guest or USB path through uh, or all, all that nice stuff. But uh, really, I'm just most of the time I just use uh, the default display. And also we have, and I will leave you, um, I will let you uh, go and read the documentation on GitHub. We have a Samba share between guests and hosts, so you could you could share um, files like that. So, Monica has a question. Let's see that quick question. <laughs> see what you did there. Do pronounce emu in quick emu like emulator or emu the bird? Well, I get you know to each their own. I guess emu emu. Emu, EMU. Well, I don't know. Paul say I want it to be EMU. So it's EMU for Paul. <laughs> I guess it's like 
emul emulacin emulator, I think. Anyway, uh, let's uh, go in there. So, yeah, we have a running uh, Lubuntu, but it's not installed. So let's install that so we can then reboot. Oh, right. I hate that. <laughs> I'm in Switzerland. That's not, that's not, you know, because I'm in Switzerland doesn't mean I speak German. So I will raise a, a, a bug for that. There are three languages in Switzerland, official languages, French, German, and Italian. And the area where we speak French, the area where they speak Italian, and the areas where they speak German are very well defined. And all IPs are geolocalized. And I'm sure, 110% sure, you can tell if my IP is in a French-speaking area or a Italian-speaking area. So that is going to be a bug report. Because uh, unless it's hidden, it's hidden behind me. I'm going to hide myself. Yes, it is. Well, I can change it, which is good. But it oh, we have some glitches apparently. Uh, but let's switch that to French, right? But that was not a very pleasing first experience. Yes, I'm in Europe. I'm in Zurich. Yes, uh, my my language. And see, I need to select German Switzerland to get to the French Switzerland keyboard. That also bugs me. But anyway, uh, we will just uh, let everything. I want to erase my disk. I don't want any swap because we don't we don't need swaps that nowadays. Now do we? Choose Greek. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Luke. Welcome. Hello, Jolly. I think I'm not uh, butchering your name. Who's there? Paul, I already mentioned. James, hello, welcome. All right, what is my name? My name is Yannick, yes. What name do you want to use for the connection? Yannick, what is the name of my computer? It's going to be called Yannick VM Ubuntu. I like long names. Uh, and your password. Guess what? My password is test. And I will start the session without asking a password. And then next, and then next. Uh, yes, uh, I want to install that. Right. So it's, it's for, you know, so far, I haven't done a lot, right? I've just typed one command on the command line quick get Lubuntu daily live, waited. I waited about 20 minutes for that to download, but that's because I'm, you know, in the Switzerland mountains and I get internet via 4G and it's not very fast. But if you've got a decent, you know, fiber or cable, uh, you, you, you're going to download that in no time. And if you already have the ISO, you can put that in the directory where a quick get expects the ISO to, to be, and it's going to see it's there and do the Check some. And yes, look, you're here, but I've mentioned you already, I think. If I haven't, then I'm sorry. And Luke is there too. So yeah, we have done we have done one command line to get the ISO. We don't even have to know where to get that ISO, right? Uh, it's gonna do that for us. Let's when it does that, let's have a quick look at uh let's see, that's my VM. How do I go back to to uh, this terminal. There we go. Um, so if we go quick get, and we're going to have a quick look <laughs> at what we can get. See, Alma, Alpine, Android, Arch Linux, Arch Linux, Katia, Yos, know, Debian, Debian, Dragonfly BSD, Elementary, Fedora, FreeBSD, they're all there. Fridos, you know, if you want to run those old those games you can do that all the bsds are here kali linux if you want to pretend you're a hacker or if you are a hacker um kd neon what else do we have linux mint 
Euh, NixOS, macOS, OpenBSD. Uh, wait, what, what do we have? What else do we have? Slackware. I've seen something. Void Linux, Windows. Sorry, no, they're, they're, they're here. And if they are not here, if you know of a distribution, uh, a Linux distribution that can, I guess there's a prerequisite, which is they have to have some kind of scheme to their download links, right? Uh, so we can say, okay, we're going to get Ubuntu Bungie. Um, so if we want to get Ubuntu Bungie, uh, here are the versions. We need to be able, I say we, the script, uh, need to be able to derive the download URL from a code, so something like Ubuntu, and a release number, something like 2004. If with that we can derive the, a download URL and that gives us an ISO, um, we can add that to Quick Get and Quick Emu. So if you know of a release that is not present here, uh, just uh, send us a pull request and we will um, you know, get to that. All right, let's see. Where is my VM? It's almost there. It's almost there. All right, so we have a question. When is 2204 LTS coming out? Is it on the first? We have in the chat, in the Twitch chat, someone we who will let us know that monica if you have the um exact date uh, of release for 2204 please post that in the chat and i will pass this information or we can look it up on the internet you know that thing uh 2004 release date oopsie uh, I'm doing that on another monitor. So Ubuntu 20.04 is set to be released on April April 21st. So there we go, April 21st. Right, um, installation is finished. Let's reboot. And so from there, we could uh, we could actually remove the ISO um, because now. Quick get will boot from the um, from the hard disk instead of the ISO. Okay, so it's going to reboot. So it was not very long. I don't think it was longer to install on the VM than to install on bare metal. Um, it's been a while since I, since I installed anything else than Ubuntu Mate, but so there we go. We have rebooted now in our brand new VM. So I, I can see we have some some glitches. Uh, so typically this would have to be confirmed by a real test on real hardware. See if it's a, a problem with the VM, which could be or if it's a problem with the uh, ISO. So there we go, we have uh, our ISO. See, I can move my windows. It seemed to react uh, very well. It's pretty snappy. Um, and just to prove that everything worked, I need to find my way around KDE, uh, uh, LX LXDE. Uh, where do I exit? Is it LXDE or LXQT? I don't even know. I'm sorry. Um, well, let's bring a. Uh, yeah. So this could very. This could be a problem with the VM and not with the. Uh, with the. I hope it's not with the release. Uh, I need a terminal. Terminal. Qt terminal. All right. Sudo. Power off. But if I don't see. My command line, that's going to be a problem. Mm. Okay, see the power off. Yes, and then it's going to ask me for my password. Test. Maybe if we want to reboot, maybe it's going to be better. Don't know. We'll see. Where's my terminal now? Where is my terminal? I think. Uh -huh. 
I am confused. There it is. <laughs> Sometimes with the VM, the virtual screen and, and everything else, I'm a bit lost. So let's rerun MU uh, with the same command, but now we should boot from the um, hard drive instead of the uh, the ISO. And I'm going to show you that actually because you don't you can't see it from. Uh... Okay, one quick remark. As you can see, the window is not full screen. Quick MU figured out that I have three screens connected to this machine. Two of them are full HD, which is uh, what you're seeing now. One of my screen is, screens is quad HD, so it's bigger. But QuickMU took the smallest screen and sized the the um, VM screen, the VM yeah screen, the VM window, uh, so it fits on the smallest screen. There are options. Uh, you can tell QuickMU to use a specific screen to compute the size, so you can actually have this window that's on your bigger screen um, without having to do anything. Right, so now do we have, um, yeah, I have a feeling, we, uh, maybe if I was on the right screen, uh, we don't have the, the, yes, there is the menu. So we still have a little bit of a problem for the, with the graphics, but other than that, it's running. And so now you can, you, you really have a, a machine, an Ubuntu, a Ubuntu machine. So let's go and open a quick terminal, see, <coughs> Sorry, if NeoFetch is installed, it probably, yes, it is. Um, so we have, what do we have? We have a machine with four gigs of RAM and probably two cores. Um, what is it, LSCPU? Oh, I don't remember the command if someone knows the Yes, we have a LSCPU, but uh, what? Um, online CPU list zero one. So we've got two two cores, uh, and what did I say? Four gigs, two core and four gigs. So that might be a little bit uh, too small for testing uh, distributions. But how did that happened well. QuickMU looked at my machine, realized that I have 16 gigs of RAM on this machine and six cores, and sized a VM accordingly. But we can change that. We can change that. We do power off for this test. And to change that, we are going to change the config file. And we can say we want. CPU core, is it CPU core? Yeah, I think it's CPU core. Let's say we want four cores and we want eight gigs of RAM. Now, if we run QuickMU again, it will restart the VM and we shall, oh, it's not on the, it's on the wrong screen again. And yes, it's a snazzy boot logo. I agree with Paul. Paul says, that is a snazzy boot logo, screen logo. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, let's have a look now. Do we have a system to... <coughs> Sorry about that. Let's <clears throat> run Neo Fetch again. Uh, we now have eight gigs of RAM in the VM and LSCPU. And go back up. And I think we now, uh, I, I might have messed up my config, but we should have here uh, four CPUs. Um, probably typed the wrong command. But anyway, uh, that's the, the, it's all in on the GitHub page. Um, maybe we can still access that. I um, don't know where this page is gone, but anyway. Um, it's on the GitHub page. You can um, have a look. You will find how many, uh, what what the command is, and uh, yeah. So 
that's uh, that's how you do that. That's how you install uh, Distro. We can we're gonna have a a, um, a test with um, let's test with um, Kubuntu. See if that's changed uh, anything. Maybe we won't have uh, as many glitches. Uh, and I'm going to have a look at user local being quick emu and its CPU cores. What did I put in there? Oh, I said CPU core. Okay, so we're going to try the same thing, but with KDE, Kubuntu. Right, I have that in my cache because I did that before the stream. Once again, we don't want to spend 20 minutes on the stream um, watching uh, Zsync download a an ISO. So I did that before. And there we go. We now have our Kubuntu daily life. Let's have a look at what's inside those directory, right? So in the the Kubuntu daily live folder, right now I only have the ISO. That's because I have never run this VM. But if we look at the Lubuntu daily live, we've got a ton of stuff. Let's uh, clear that. All right, so we've got the disk.qco2, which is the file we've specified in the config earlier. It's already six gigs. We've got the logs, we've got the ports. So, so there is a way in the config file to map ports. So you can have servers running on the guest and you can, on the, uh, yes, on the guest, and you can access that from the host. Uh, we've got the uh, .sh. So, okay, um, hang on to your seats because look into the delay. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the command line that QuickEMU generated for you to run QEMU. And that's not even the whole thing. There's, there's more. Wait, there's more. So if you wanted to run that by hand, that's what you would have to type on the command line, right? All of this comes from the config file I showed you uh, earlier, so this one, and this does a lot of the of the tricks because uh, this and, and and those function and those uh, parameters here. That's what determines uh, what gets into this common. Uh, if the OS was macOS, uh, and the guest OS was macOS or Windows, the command line would be different, of course. So let's edit our Kubuntu config file, let's say CPU cores equals uh, four, and then RAM equals eight gig. Okay, let's run quick MU VM and let's run our Kubuntu daily live. And it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna start VM on the wrong screen because it uses the, the main screen to run. And we're going to install Kubuntu and see if it's any different. It has a less snazzy uh, boot screen logo, but it's 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 glowing. It's the glowy Kubuntu. Now that's not Kubuntu, that's QuickEMU that does that, flips everything upside down for some reason. Um, installer crashed. Ah, that is not a good start. The installer and could an unrecoverable error at desktop session will now be run so that you may investigate the problem or try installing again. Well, that might be the VM. That might be a problem with the ISO. That's why we test those ISOs, ISOs, right? So I guess um, that would have to be installed on bare metal and see, um, no, installer crashed, all right? so. What's the crash report? Argument did that match an overload call. Mm. It doesn't look secure icon pixmap. Ah. It might be might be worth 
trying to run that with the spice display maybe see if that changes something might shut down uh, yes shut down it was upside down yes monica uh Q qmu qmu does that for some weird reason so let's run that with display spice okay and did it put that on the right screen oh yes it did put that on the right screen so spice is a protocol i think i'm, I'm not very uh i'm not an expert in that um but um, this is how you could use the usb pass through for example nope it crashed Yes, it's a uh, very nice wallpaper, but Kubuntu crashed. So that would require installing on bare metal before reporting a a bug report for um, opening a bug report. Well, I'm I'm disappointed. I uh, I would have loved to have a second distro to show you, but hey, you know, it is what it is. Uh, let's. It's the um, demo effect because if I had prepped that a little bit more, I would have seen uh, uh, that. And uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to download an, another. Oh, or maybe we could. No, we, it's going to take uh, way too long and way too many, too much um, on width. So oh, let's go back. Go back to Lubuntu. See if they up. Oh, Oh, okay, let's see if the spice display makes things better for Ubuntu. Um, and then we will have a look at quick GUI. All right, is it better? Oh, it's better. It's better. It's much better with, with the spice display. So we're going to use that for now. Um, what we get from that, we get we we lose a little bit of performance graphic wise uh, I've been told but we gain the ab uh, ability to select USB devices for the redirections so it will show you all your connected um, devices so right now for example my stream deck you can see my uh, the stream deck here uh, is connected to my main machine it would not be seen by the VM but if I was to click on that, then my host would lose the um, the stream deck, but it would be seen by the uh, the VM. So the webcam, for example, if I was to click here, you would uh, lose me. Although I'm not on the screen right now, but but the VM would then get uh, access to the webcam. So if you let's say you want to try, or you you have something a a Call a, a tool to make a video call that only works on on Windows, for example. You could run a v Windows VM with QuickMU, then use the Spice display, enable the webcam to pass through, and then use Windows to make your call. Cool. Uh, so we have question. Oh, let's see. I don't know if I have the answers, but. ISO should also work in VMs, right? So should we report these bugs also? Uh, it, I don't know. Uh, honestly, that's that's going to have to be discussed with the distro maintainers. Do they do they reckon the, the ISO has to work in the VM? I don't even know if it's a VM problem. That's why I, I'm saying maybe we should first test on hardware and then if it works on hardware then report a bug that it doesn't work on a VM but if it doesn't work on hardware then it's a bigger problem it's just that the installer doesn't work so it's it has to be tested on hardware before sending a bug report because we don't we don't really know what to report just yet all we know is that it doesn't work on a VM maybe it just doesn't work at all and hello uh, Erencyman88. Hope I'm not butchering your name. 
Monica says, yes, it's good to note you won't count the bug either in a VM or on bare metal. I agree, but as I said, at this moment, I don't know enough to write a good bug report. Why, what would I say? It doesn't work on VM. Yeah, but maybe it doesn't work at all. So yeah, needs to, in my opinion, it needs more testing on real hardware. But anyway, so uh, using the spice thing, you can have this USB pass through, which is awesome. For example, if you want to transfer files. So I know a certain Martin Wimpress who works on, um, on, on some Raspberry Pi images and he builds the images on the, uh, inside a VM because he needs a, I think it's a 2004 version of Ubuntu. And he passes through a fast USB stick to transfer the image back to his host, which is uh, awesome. And as I said, you could pass through the um, webcam. Uh, so from there, then you are um, on your own to do all the testings, uh, just you know to make sure everything works. But we're going we, we're going to have a look at another tool. One that I know because I, I am one of the authors. Let's close that. Quit. Stop. Yes. And this tool is called, and I'm going to deliberately stay in this folder, Quick GUI. What is Quick GUI? This is Quick GUI. Quick GUI is a Flutter front hand, front end to quick get and quick emu. It will do, you know, when I did earlier, uh, I don't know if I can, uh, I don't have time. Earlier I did, I did that list underscore CSV function to quick get, uh, and that's 900 and something uh, different configuration. Well, that's what this thing does. So if you, uh, yes, it's, it's, in, uh, it's in English, okay, well, Yes, you could change the language here in here and have that in your own language. I've, um, we have many contributions on GitHub from people who are translating um, QuickGUI. So we can create new machines or manage existing machines. So let's start with manage existing machines. I am going to change this folder. I'm going to go where my stream folder is. And if I do that, you can see the Kubuntu Daily Live is here and the Lubuntu Daily Live is here. And if I run that, it will start my VM in um, using Spice. So it's going to be pretty. And also it tells us that the SSH port is 22220 and the Spice port is 5930. So We've already, we're already using, um, I think it's Spicy. That's the uh, Spice client we're using to connect to the VM. But we could also use SSH. So, um, well, I don't have another terminal in here. Uh, if I do Control Z, BG, okay, and I could do SSH localhost, that's P22220. Well, it doesn't have any. Um, keys installed, uh, maybe, well, it's, it's probably configured to only accept uh, keys and I don't have any keys installed, but it does work. You could um, connect to SSH, or maybe it doesn't have a, an SSH server installed by default. Huh, now that might be the problem, or the uh, problem, maybe not problem, but. So yes, you can run your VM from Quick GUI. You can, see that it's running. You can uh, connect uh, here via SSH. All right, that's that's the problem. I don't know if you can read that. It's it's really small, but it says SSH server not detected on guests. So it, it tells you, right, that it's not installed. Otherwise, you could uh, install it and access your VM. And you can then also connect uh, with Spice because if I close this window here, that won't actually stop the VM. The VM is still running, and I can now reconnect to my VM. So if you close that <clears throat> and you still have um, 
you know, um, RAM uh, or CPU uh, used by the VM, then <laughs> maybe you just forgot to stop your VM. And of course, from here, you can also just stop the VM. You are able to terminate the virtual machine, yes. And it stops now. So that's the <clears throat> manage uh, VM thing. You can have, as you, you've seen um, here, a VM is actually a folder and a config file, right? They have to be two of the same name. And so here you can change the directory in which you find your VM. So you can have different folders for different, uh, I don't know, for usage, uh, like, uh, I don't know, ISO testing, and then put all your ISO testing in there, and then your your Mac VM because you want to publish a, an iOS app or something like that. And you can have a different version of macOS. You can have a Windows folder or whatever you want to do. Right. Now, what if we want to create a new virtual machine? Well, we would create, we would click on that. And then we have the same options that we had, we had earlier when we typed quick get without any, uh, anything. When we do that, when we do quick get, quick get without any option, it spits out um, all the, um, uh, the uh, versions we can use, but those are the, the code names. But if you click that, you actually get the real names with the uh, nice icons when we have them. So that's a long list of OSs that we can get. Um, huh, we've got some error messages in the console. So let's say we want something like Ubuntu, Ubuntu. And let's get Ubuntu Mate because why not? Once I've selected my operating system, I go in, in here and I have all the different versions. So we have 900 and something versions because we've got all those uh, old AOL versions in there. But, you know, if you wanted to get this version, I'm pretty sure you could. So let's say we want the daily live version, and then we just click download. Well, if I do that, well, I can do that, but I'm going to stop that. The download is about to start. I think it's gonna pick that up. If it doesn't, well, I'm going to consider. So this is actually looking at the download progress from the command line and trying to pass that. So maybe we have a problem here. I'm going to have to have a look at that. And I think I just stalled the stream for a while using all the bandwidth from my download. Uh, it says download finish. It's a lie. Uh, it's actually, it's, it's been cancelled. So Maybe I should uh, have a look at that. Right, another message. <laughs> but that's going to be, um, yeah, that, that, that's it. So, so you, when you use Quick GUI, you've got exactly the same thing as when you use Quick Get. But I think it's a lot prettier and a lot um, easier to use. So if we look at what's in the Ubuntu Mate daily live uh, uh, folder, We've got a .iso.part file, which means we can resume downloading. So if you stop a download, if you crash, if the download crashes, uh, it's not a problem. You can resume that. It will pick up where it stopped. Quick GUI will do that. Quick Get will do that too. Um, so those tools will help you in case of problem. Well, I think I've. Uh, talked about uh, about that. Uh, I've said what I planned to say. Um, it's a quick way, hence the name, to start a VM. Uh, the project was started to help the Ubuntu Mate QA team test the Ubuntu Mate ISOs, and then um, Martin added, you know, second version, uh, second um uh, operating system, uh, and then the third, and then and then it, it snowballed from there, and we've got tons of pull requests of people uh, from people wanting to add um, new and interesting operating systems. And as I said uh, at the beginning, um, we only support um, 
x86 uh, architecture uh, or actually uh, uh, 60 uh, what is it x64 well uh, uh, pc basically pc architecture um no support for uh rm just yet um it's something we're trying to do md64 thank you it's something we we we, we are eventually going to have because it would be awesome to be able to spin a a um raspberry pi virtual machine you know with the uh, maybe the the ubuntu the uh, rm version of ubuntu um to do some testing and maybe to write uh code using a real machine keyboard and and, and screen and all that and when that's done put that on a real uh, raspberry pi um yeah as i said mac and windows work with some restrictions uh i'm going to paste the link to um or is it still there uh, if i was on the correct screen that would be better but no it doesn't seem to be um to be there so i need to get that url where is it uh there we go github oh that's first let's bring this window on your screen so you can see that uh github uh, um slash quick uh emu project slash quick emu yes so let's take that paste that in the chat and here you have all our project the quick emu project uh you will find the quick emu the quick emu icons but that's that's for us <coughs> Sorry, that's uh, an internal project uh, that uh, we're using. And quick GUI. So those are the two projects you'd be interested in. And packaging is also uh, for us. For, uh, for uh, well, for us. It's, it's for everybody, but that's the that's what we use to package and, and build uh, dev files for that. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I had to say about... Uh, about this project. Um, if you have questions, please uh, type them in the chat. I do my best to answer that. I, I'm only the guy who wrote the front end. I'm not the guy who wrote the, the, the quick emu script, but I, I, I know a little bit of about that. So let's see. Looks great. Do you need it sponsored for the repo? Uh, mm, I don't think we need it to be sponsored. I have. Uh, I, I, I. That's a question you need to ask. Uh, well, that's a question that actually needs to be directed to Martin Rimpress. So, I will uh, ask Martin, and uh, or, or if you can join our Discord server. Uh, I think it's. What's the. Uh, the discord this thing it's wimpy's world world io slash discord is it could it be that simple it actually is so i'm going to paste the um discord link no nope, that's not the discord link what happened with my discord link wimpy's world world.io slash discord and copy and paste that. There we go. Wimpy's world.io slash discord. Uh, do we have another question? Excellent for posting the link. Yes, I know. <laughs> I know. I just, I always forget that. I, I need some some elves you know like in harry potter and some elves to do my to help me do my, do my postings uh what else uh well i don't see any other questions so yeah quick mu quick gui quick get um will help you test the isos for ubuntu but also do a lot more than that uh, I think, yeah, I think Wimpy is a Motu too. 
but yeah yeah thank you for for the offering so there you have it that was quick emu project to test ubuntu isos if there are no more questions then i think i will and the stream right here it's been almost an hour right it's a, it's a good time for a stream and a good time to uh, stop thank you very much everybody for watching live um if you're watching that on youtube or on twitch this has been recorded on the 15th of march 2022 live on the ubuntu on air channels plural uh, i think it's twitch.tv slash ubuntu on air and youtube.com slash ubuntu on air i think I, i'm not uh and I guess I could do check, but I'm I'm sure Monica will post the link in like no time in the chats, which you, uh, I will put on the screen later on. But anyway, thank you, thank you, Monica, thank you, uh, everyone. It was a pleasure to be back streaming for the Ubuntu on our channel. I will be back in two weeks, hopefully with um, Andrea. We will do more kernel shenanigans pick up where we left last time and um, try and have something that uh, that looks more like a kernel. Well, it does have already look like looks like a kernel. Go and check the, uh, the, the the videos on YouTube. I think they're stored on YouTube. I think they're no longer on Twitch um, for everything we've done. Um, Andrea also has, has a GitHub where he puts the code. And on the Ubuntu discourse, you can find a thread about, um, about the kernel uh, he built. YouTube.com slash Ubuntu on Thank you, Monica. <coughs> so thank you. Have a good night, good day, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Take care of yourselves. We will see you in two weeks. Goodbye, and the window is masking my hand. Let's let, let put me in full screen there. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you for watching. Cheers. <laughs>